Let's go straight to Zoe Gardner, an independent immigration policy expert and campaigner. Zoe, welcome here to the programme. Let's take this in stages. Your reaction, first of all, to today's ruling. Uh, hi, thank you for having me on the programme. Yeah, I mean, it's a huge relief to hear that the uh, Supreme Court has unanimously found what I think uh, your average man on the street could have already told you about Rwanda, which is it's not a safe place for refugees. Um, the government hasn't done its homework. It's, it's a pretty strong judgment, actually. In really, really clear terms, they've laid out that the, the system in Rwanda is totally deficient and that the government should have been clearly aware of that. Um, so the government's wasted millions and millions of pounds. It's wasted um, a year of time, at least. It's wasted a huge amount of energy um, and political capital pursuing this deal, but it never should have been doing it in the first place because ultimately it wasn't about whether it was legal or not today, was it? It's about the fact that this deal is beneath us. It's grubby. It's paying off a poor country to take in the human beings that we don't want to have to deal with. That's not the people we are in this country. We're good enough to take care of refugees and we should take this moment to change our approach completely. I'll come back to a couple of points you made there in a moment. But in terms of the approach going forward, you heard what Alex Forsyth was saying. You heard what James Cleverly said in the House of Parliaments. The response so far has been perhaps we're going to have a new treaty that assuages the concerns of the court. So in effect, continuing with the Rwanda policy. Yes, it's extraordinary, isn't it? I mean, some of the more extreme elements of even even voices from within government have been saying, let's just ignore the law. These are our lawmakers in this country who rule our country saying, let's just ignore the law. Let's send vulnerable refugees to places where there is clear and proven risk of danger. Um, and, and of course, then you have uh, Rishi Sunak, who's trying desperately to save face, um, trying desperately to pretend that they, they've planned for this and actually there's a way around it. If you look at the detail of the judgment, it doesn't seem very likely to me that they'll be able to overcome the system systemic and very serious failures in the Rwandan asylum system that led to um, serious um, people being put at serious risk of harm um, in the past, even the recent past. I don't think there's a way that they're going to yes. easily get around that. Two quick final questions. Were you relieved? Did you think it was significant that Lord Reid uh, said and made it clear that actually exiting the European Convention on Human Rights wouldn't mean the government would get the go ahead on this because we've heard it over the last few months with elements within the Conservative Party saying that if this went against them, perhaps that's one of the routes that seem to be closed down today. Yes, well, of course, we've seen elements of the, the extreme right wing of the Tory party calling for us to follow Putin's Russia out of the jurisdiction of the European Court of Human Rights. It was good to see today the 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 um, the judge in the case emphasized that actually the protections of all of our human rights are embedded in lots of different international conventions, lots of different parts of our own domestic UK law. And actually, that's a good thing. That's that's the basis on which we um, have a claim to try to prevent torture from happening yes. around the world. That's the you basis said there at the start of that answer, <laughs> the extreme right wing of the Tory party. Uh, the truth of it is that illegal immigration, it is an issue for the UK public. And when you look around Europe, other European countries considering perhaps looking at third countries, just exploring similar types of areas, not necessarily the Rwanda plan. But uh, if this is not the right way, then what is the way to address the problem of illegal immigration? Well, the way to address migration and, and people will always need to move. So we're talking about people who are escaping from war and persecution, from climate change and poverty, things that they just simply have to escape from. They need a solution that is realistic, that isn't passing the parcel saying not here, not here, not here. Um, so what we need to do is work together to regulate the, the migration flows that already exist, that happen anyway, despite the fact that, as you say, across Europe and in the UK, we have right-wing governments that have promised that they'll 
be tougher and tougher and tougher and do the next most extreme step to stop this hasn't stopped it. It's happening anyway. So the way which we make it work is we regulate those routes. We make them safe. We make them formalized. We make sure that we know who's coming in on them. And we support those people um, by funding our communities to be able to sort my support migrants. And then we can all benefit from what this brilliant actually source of uh, new people and new ideas and fresh perspectives and new labor that we need desperately in our society. All of those things that it can bring us, we can all mutually benefit from that. Yep. And we have to stop pretending we can stop it. Zoe Gardner, thanks for your time. Let's talk to Siobhan Mullally, a 